Hey guys, welcome back to another review. Today we'll be reviewing Revell's Fairy Gannet T5 1 to 70 second scale. So, uh, if I'm looking through the box a little bit, this seems to be the best Revell Fairy, well, not Revell, but the best Fairy Gannet on the market in 1 to 70 second scale at the moment in time. As usual, just a quick overview of other kits by Revell. Want to make you to buy some more. But yeah, so, uh, so look in quite nice box art. Doesn't look CGI. It looks like a nice painted piece of artwork on the front. So uh, quick, to take a look inside. I have removed the baggie from this one, but uh, still in the perfect shape. Right. I will remove the parts and just leave the instruction manual. Right, let's have a look at the quick look at the decals. Anyway, this is the weirdest shaped decal sheet I've ever seen. It's a bit of like a really elongated kind of sheet, like a nice long sheet. Anyway, um, uh, you have to put in the centre of the roundels for this one, like original Airfix kits, but I don't mind that. It's quite nice, nostalgic for when I used to do it when I was much younger. Got nice panels there, but I'll probably paint in the detail if it's recessed or and on raised details. Here you have some uh, straps, but I'll probably buy some photo eight straps to make it look a lot better. But yeah, decals feel really thick for this kit. But uh, other than that, those decals look fine. Some history on the fairy gannet. It's about here. It's been English and German here. Um, I have seen this aircraft at Duxford, and I am planning on doing it in the same scheme as the Duxford one. So I have bought two paints to make it the same colour. I have bought what is Sky, so it's kind of like a sea green, as you can see underneath, like a palish kind of colour. And I've also bought light sea grey, so it's like a kind of off grey greenish kind of colour the, the classic sea aircraft colours so uh, yeah uh, not stapled together which is a bit of a pain and I really hate it when they're not but uh, yeah here's some overview of the parts so the sprues, the trees whatever you want to call them Anyway, here's step one, two, yeah, in standard reveal fashion. Easy to follow instructions, not really too difficult. But I'm a bit upset that you can't have the wings folded because I like, I don't know, look forward to having wings folded in aircraft, but no, you haven't got the option for that, sadly. Not too bad, not the worst. Anyway, one colour scheme option, I will not be going with this. I will buy separate decals separately for this kit. So I can do what was it's very similar to the Duxford version. So yeah. Oh, there's a secondary scheme on the back. This seems to be in orange and silver. And that one is also orange and silver. So yeah. You get the two nice schemes. Both very similar, just with different markings, I take it. Anyway, yeah, so they are instructions to the kit. I have seen this at Duxford, this aircraft. Very different aircraft, haven't seen anything much like that ever before. Right, uh, st standard say, uh, Revell safety sheet, nothing special here. Anyway, let's start with the oh, bit of the canopy section has collapsed off the train. Anyway, yeah, let's start with the two smallest spr sprues. So these are the weirdest sprues I've ever seen. They just, I haven't seen anything like them. It's really strange. Anyway, uh, I thought this was the race detail when I had a quick look through it, but it turns out on the other side you have nice recessed and raised detail. Not coming up too well on the camera, but it's really nice. Fair amount of flash, but uh, nice raised and recessed detail. So, uh, yeah, you got the. Uh, what I'd imagine is the uh, underside for the uh, intake there. So there are the tiniest sprues I've ever seen, other than clear plastic sprues. 
Right, here we have some massive sprue. I don't understand why they could have toned this down and stuck the couple of sprues together. Anyway, here we have the main fused large halves. Nice, fairly detailed. Easy to put together from the looks, unless it is one that does not want to go together. Here you have the, where the wings and the aircraft fuse large connects with this piece here. Cockpit detail that can be glued in. Wheels which are in one section which is quite nice. Not not weighted though but they are nice. Uh, some air brake details here and there. Landing gears, that kind of thing. Uh, two props on the front, yeah, there you go. So the nice detail on that there. Uh, here is the Bombay, which has a nice texture in there, which is quite detailed, which is lovely. Can't wait to see that. The wing, the both the wings are on this here. So you've got those there. And then you have the main tail sections so the fairy gunner has a very iconic tail section which contains these two sections here which slot into these parts here it's got a very weird style to its tail but it haven't seen anything like it once more it's a very unique aircraft right in this little baggie we have the clear parts let's cut it out have a quick look inside one of the parts are oh, don't be a pain one of the parts has fallen off the oh, I say. <laughs> one of the parts has fallen off the sprue, causing a bit of difficulty when I put this back into this little like slip in bag with a sleeve. Anyway. For a fairly old molded kit, you had lovely, lovely clear pieces really quality crystal clear pieces which is impressive especially as the quite new molded tornado dreadfully misty parts here as well nice clear plastic parts on that bit there so overall on that matter let's get them back in the bag real quick it seems to be a pretty nice kit so uh before building the kit itself, would I recommend this kit? Just from a quick overview. Yes, yes, I would re I would recommend this kit from a quick overview. It's a nice looking kit. And as long as it goes to together well, then it should be fine. And if you've got filler on your hands, then even better. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. So, uh, thanks for watching the review and see you on the next video.